Hello and welcome to Transformation Now. Hi, I'm Rita Rocker, speaker, author, trainer with SoaringHigher.Rocks. And I'm very happy to be continuing on a program that I started a couple weeks ago that says Sink, Swim, or Float, Surviving the Tidal Waves of Life. A lot of people are going through a lot of tidal waves right now that feel like they're kind of getting swept away and all the things that have been going on the last few years. And, um, you know, some aren't, but there's still things that hit us all, obstacles and experiences that uh, make it kind of tough sometimes. It can maybe really throw us off track or throw us down where we don't know if we're going to get back up. And so I'm just going to briefly cover a little bit from the last program and then move on from there. And so, you know, something that Jim Rohn, who's a very famous motivational, inspirational speaker and educator had said one time was, you can't change your destination overnight, but you can change the direction overnight. So you can't get there overnight, but you can certainly change the direction of your life and say, no more of this, no more of that. This is the direction I'm going and start a whole new life heading in the right direction. I heard a statement was once that says, when you fall down, fall forward. That way, when you get up, you're facing the right direction. And I, I like that. I think there's a lot of uh, truth in that. And so when we use the word later, I'll get to it later. I have too many other things to do. Oh, later. Well, later is a dream killer because you never get to fulfill that dream because later is always out there somewhere. It's kind of like, you know, when you see a picture of like, a, oh, I guess they're kind of jokes, I'm not sure. Um, maybe someone's riding a donkey or someone has a dog and they want to keep them going forward. So they have, looks like a fishing pole way ahead and uh, on a string and on the string is say like a carrot or something like that. So they keep going forward thinking eventually they're going to get to that carrot. Of course, it's being used to pull someone along. But you know, that's kind of like life sometimes. It's like the, the later is that carrot or that, that goal uh, that's out here, but we're never quite getting to it because we, we can't get out and grab it. And so think about that, you know, the, the later, how much later is it going to be? Uh, so think about creating your own growth plan. I've talked about that a lot. I will continue to before I get into some other things. So on the Sink, Swim, and Float, Surviving the Tidal Waves of Life, uh, the first paragraph I'll just share with you, it says, today, are you sinking, swimming, or floating? What happened to you up until now that has put you in one of these three boxes, these three pools, okay? What will it take to bring you from gasping at the bottom of the lake, which sometimes we feel that way, to powerfully racing across the pool of life to get to that goal, that desire that you want so badly to reach. Let us explore your transition from drowning in a sand pit of life to swimming for the gold. It is time to mentally inflate your arms with strength. Okay, that means physically by exercise, the things you do inflate your arms with strength, but also strengthening your arms to go out there uh, to write, if that's your passion, to play in certain things, whatever the case may be, to strengthen your arms. Put fins of faith on your feet. That can be a really hard one, but we have to have faith as we go forward, walking forward in order to get to that goal that we want, to get out of some things we may be in and go forward in life. So again, think of putting fins on, of faith on your feet to swim forward very quickly. Don the goggles of commitment to your vision. So think of goggles as the vision. What, you, what do you see through the goggles of life that you put on? What do, you, what do you see? So think about that. Think about putting goggles of your life on and then sit quietly and think, what am I seeing? Am I seeing good things going forward? Am I seeing where I finally crush those uh, habits, those relationships, those things that were tying me down? What am I seeing through those goggles? Because, you know, a lot of times we're going to have to change over and over, maybe daily, the things that we're seeing, because those are things maybe around us, those are bank accounts, it could be relationships, it could be all kinds of things. What are we seeing? Is this doing me any good? Is this helping me? Is this hurting me? Is it hurting my family? Is it hurting my finances? Or is this a step in the right direction? 
with those, those fins of faith, you know, on your feet. So think about that. What are you seeing? And a lot of times if we just stop to think about it, you know, because that all will come back from our subconscious, what we're seeing, that's kind of ruling us. I guess 5% of our behaviors, our decisions are conscious and 95% are what's controlled in our subconscious, things that have been planted in there, things that are ingrained in there. A lot of times we don't even know that they're in there. You know, and then, then something happens and there's a trigger. We hear a song, we, somebody says something, it triggers something from the past and sets it in a, in a certain mood or a certain direction and can build us up and get us all excited or it can really tear us down. And so think about that too. And so what can catapult you over that hurdle? So dive into the glistening pool of strength, of dignity, of power, and of limitless hope. And like I've said before, it does not cost a dime. Trust me, I'm doing this a lot now. It does not cost you a dime to visualize the things you want in life. Don't say, well, I can't do that. The more you say, I can't do that, I won't be able to do that, you won't be able to do that. You can't do that because you're pulling in more of the same thing that you're thinking about. And I have been studying so much lately and learning so much about, more about that that everything we speak out, it's out there, it's energy. It can come back to us. So if we keep projecting, I can't, that's exactly what we get. We can't. And yet if, if we start saying, I can and I will, even if you don't have the money that you need maybe to start a program, to start a business, whatever the case may be, it doesn't cost you anything to visualize you doing that because every super successful person that I've read about, that I've heard about, and the testimonies have all done that. They saw it before it actually manifested. Where'd they see it? Up here. And so it doesn't matter. Like if you're, well, it does matter, but I mean, if, if you're broke, that cannot stop you from thinking, from dreaming, from visualizing, because the more you do that, the more you're going to pull in the right people, the right places, the right things to manifest that dream, that desire in your heart. So if you feel like a fish out of water, and fish out of water will choke, I mean, they, all, they can't live out of water. And so if you feel like a fish out of water, stop, stop. It's like, okay, I really feel like I am a fish out of water, or I'm the other way around and I'm drowning. It's like, no, I have to stop right now. I have to change directions. And so, you know, find a new river to swim in. I love that. We don't have to stay in the same river. I mean, we may have uh, things that we're responsible for. Could be caregiving. It could be kids. It's certain, you know, there are certain things that we're all responsible for. However, a new river to swim in could still mean that we can change certain habits, certain things if we're tied into like caregiving, but we have a real desire to help people, maybe a coaching situation, uh, maybe teaching people how to manage their finances. Okay, then start bartering. I've talked about this before, where you can barter and you can help somebody who needs something you have because you all have gifts, you all have talents, you all have abilities and, and barter back and forth. You know, I, I, I'll trade you to help you with your finances and your banking and, and to get your finances in order if you can help me by babysitting one night a week, taking care of my loved one who is incapacitated and needs, you know, 24 hour care. Uh, if you could make me a couple meals because I don't have the time and I'll do this for you instead. So there's so many things that you can barter or trade with other people where you don't really have to have the finances you may think you need. So think about that, getting out and talking with other people. And a lot of times the person would love to have you bring it up, you suggest it. Hey, I know that um, you know maybe you're so busy right now, and you, you you're talking about oh, you don't have any time to clean your house, and you know it's a mess, but you're just exhausted. How about we trade? I'll clean your house, you know, like tomorrow or sometime. If you can do this for me, if you can uh, cook a few bigger meals while you're cooking anyway, or you can help me with some other thing or maybe you know how to change the oil in my car. Can you do that and I'll do this? So suggest it, talk to people, get people going, maybe a group of people actually that you could grow a bigger group of people 
who all want to be there to help each other. They all have skills. It's like, yeah, this person over here, they could do that. And then in turn, I can get this back. So I think it'd be nice. Uh, we need so much more community nowadays because so many people are so divided in every way. So what about community, building a community of people who are there to help each other, to build each other up in a positive way? That's very important in a very positive way. So think about that, okay? A new river to swim in. That's something that you could do, whether it's relationship, health, finances, whatever it is. But be who you were designed to be, not who a parent or a coach or a counselor uh, or anybody else said. Be who you were meant to be. And like I've always said, when you think about something that you want to do, if it makes you light up and it feels right in your heart and you get excited when you think about it, that's what you were meant to do, not what somebody else told you to do. That's what you were meant to do. Sometimes we see like parents who, um, and I've heard this before in stories where maybe there was a young man, you know, a teenager, maybe high school, and um, he was a nerd, and I say that very respectfully. You know, he had a, a lot of brains for, could be chemistry, a, a lot of technical ability who would be great uh, creating things scientifically or creating new uh, computerized uh, applications, but instead he has to go out and try to be a football player or a basketball player or something like that. I've heard this story more than once because that's what dad or somebody else wanted or expected of him. And so he was feeling like a failure because that wasn't his niche, that wasn't his desire or his goal. He had no interest in that but it made him feel badly because he wasn't excelling at something that maybe a parent or somebody wanted him to excel at because that wasn't his gift, that wasn't his calling. And so we always have to be very careful about what we're doing. Uh, um, you know, I, I taught modeling for several years, which was several years ago, but I remember sometimes even with the little, little girls and stuff, and it's like, they didn't even know what was going on. And, you know, it kind of had an issue. I, I had to stop working with the parents and the little, little tiny ones because I thought, this isn't right. Um, those poor kids <laughs> don't, don't know what they're doing. They're trying to fulfill an expectation of a parent who wants to live vicariously through them. The parent didn't, didn't get to experience that or the sports or whatever the case may be. So they want their child to do it so they can live vicariously through the child. If that has happened to you, or you know, so, you know, we stop and think. This, we all have our callings, we all have our abilities, we all have our talents. And we need to respect that and know it's for me. This is for them. You can't force something to, onto someone. And there's some other things that I won't talk about that we know are being forced on some kids right now. And it's no. Everybody has a right to choose who they are, what their dreams, their desires, and their goals are, because that's where they light up. That's what they're going to understand. That's what they want to live for. And so think about that. And so it's a profound experience when we discover that there's a trigger from an earlier point in life that may have set you on a course far below what you want and deserve. And that's kind of what I was just talking about, uh, things that they're really not for us. And so um, think about that. You know, an experience subconsciously can cause us to sabotage everything to keep affirming that we are no good. So if there's, if there's something that, you know, happens, there's a trigger and it goes, yeah, well, that's right. Why am I even trying for this? I'm not worthy of this person, this place, this thing, this job. So why am I even trying? Well, that's when you stay floundering underwater because you're telling yourself that even though it's not true. And so is that true? Uh -uh. No, none of that is. And so think about that. And, you know, because I've thought a lot, you know, like, am I sabotaging myself? Did I sabotage myself from a lot of things that I could have done? Yes. Yes. And then you have the regrets for having done that. So think about that. And um, just think about, is this building me up? Is this sabotaging me? What's it doing? When people sit down and they're quiet and they try to quiet their minds, maybe put on some music that's just kind of uh, no words, but just something mellow and sit there and think, close your eyes and start thinking, okay, this happened to me. This is how I grew up, etc. Am I, is any of this really helping me? What is it, what is it doing? And a lot of times like, I need to quit that because it's, it's caused whole, so many experiences in my life that I didn't need to experience. 
and think, gee, I could have been over here by now, but nope, I didn't, I didn't, didn't do that. And so we can still move on from there. I don't care if you're eight or 80 or whatever age you are, we can still move forward. When I talked to a lady who was about 80 one time when I was uh, speaking at a Christian women's group up in South Dakota and she, oh, I'm too old. I don't have anything to offer anybody. And I said, yes, you do. You have, look at all the experiences that you've had in your life. You have had so many ex life experiences in a ton of different ways. I said, you have a lot to share with other people, younger people who need to know about your experiences, what you did to overcome things, how you survived things that you've been through. So we should never think that we're too old to help someone else or, or we haven't been equipped with the right education, whatever the case may be, no. We all have a lot to offer other people. Ask God to put those people in your path or ask God to put, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the people that you need in your path and he will do it. I'm experiencing that now too. And it's, it's really amazing. You know, you need something or you want to achieve something and then bam, here comes this person. And, and the, the Lord set that up for you to help you know get you going forward so it, it it really does work it really does so always think about that you know a lot of times we avoid failure or rejection because we so badly don't want someone to leave us we don't want to fail in our job so what do we do we leave we quit and that's that's an escape and that that is certainly nothing that we should be doing because that would be the whole life a whole life of escaping from the fear of failure, rejection, abandonment, whatever the case may be. And so we need to be careful with that. And you don't want to continue to attract the same discouraging, depressing relationships, situations, et cetera, because it's really easy to do until we finally have that mindset of, mm -mm, no more, no, not going there anymore. And so think about that. Any tapes that are locked in your brain, in your subconscious, they'll keep popping up until you finally talk to yourself enough times that it's been booted out of there. And instead, it's been replaced with good, positive things and um, giving you the, the steps, the bravery sometimes and courage to go forward. Because, you know, when things are familiar, even though we hate them and they're destructive, sometimes we run back to what's familiar because it's familiar. Instead of, you know, thinking, oh, I'm afraid to try this because what if I fail? So then we don't do that. I mean, when I competed in Mrs. Nebraska and I won that year, it was the only year I was able to because my husband died during my term. But um, I remember I only told like five people, I think it was. And I, because I thought, well, if I fail, if I lose, I don't want people to know that I even entered it. And I thought, you know, that was <laughs> kind of lame. But that's the way I was then, even that fear of if I, if I don't win, I don't want to look like a loser, which is, totally ridiculous, but that's sometimes the way our brains work. And so we deserve the best. And I saw a saying that said, if you think something is wrong with you, you will find it and get people around you to support it. So again, if you think something is wrong with you, because so many times people, oh, yeah, this is wrong with me, that's wrong with me, I'm this, I'm not that, etc. So if you think something is wrong with you, you'll find it. You'll come up with all kinds of things that are wrong with you. And then we can get people around us to support it. How do we get people around us to support it? Because people treat us the way we treat ourselves so many times. Not all people, but a lot of people do. And so if we project Things like, uh, I can remember one of my sisters, she's in heaven now, but it was kind of like, you know, she, I hate to use the word hate, but I think loathing is even too light. And so she always gave off this impression to people that she was unworthy, that she was not likable, um, that she was certainly somebody they could reject. So what happened? That's what happened a lot of her life. But she was giving that off. When we give off that feeling of not being worthy, People will find it. They'll, they'll, they'll find out what you think is wrong with you because that's what's being projected out. And so you really want to think about that and not project something that's negative and then wonder, why are people treating me like this? Well, it's uh, quite often because that's the energy that we're projecting out to them. 
And so you really want to stop and think about that a lot. I've thought about that a lot. You know, like when you walk into a room and you're upset and maybe everybody was having a great time or somebody else walks in the room, you were having a great time and then it's like, oh, they just put a wet blanket on the whole thing because the energy they were projecting. Always check your energy and see what it's doing. Check your face. <laughs> you know, people have told me through the years, a lot of times it's like, well, you look like you're upset. Well, my mouth naturally droops. Physically, my mouth naturally droops unless I'm smiling. And so a lot of times I was just, you know, off thinking about something. But with my mouth drooping down, it looked like I was unhappy and I had to start thinking, wow, how do I look when I, you know, meeting other people? Do I look like I'm cranky, sad or something like that when I'm not? but it's just the way my, my face is. And so sometimes we just have to change little things like that too. So think about that. Everything is energy, as I've mentioned, and that's very, very important to constantly check yours and see what it's doing. And then also constantly checking other people's energy. It's like, oh yeah, they look really upset or maybe they look sad. And instead of going, well, I don't wanna deal with you, you're sad, it might be, hey, is there something I can do to help? Uh, do you want to sit down and talk about something? So a lot of times I think we need to be very sensitive to someone else's energy, even when they're angry. Why are they angry? Usually people are angry because of an emotion or something that hurts. Okay, we get angry because somebody hurt us. What do we do? We get angry. Uh, you know, I saw where even really hard-nosed business executives, the decision makers, a lot of times, you know, they just want everything to be um, very rational, numbers, statistics. But successful salespeople, for instance, say there's an emotion in there. There's an emotion in there. You hit that emotion without, you know, sounding all, you know, mellow or whatever. But if you can hit an emotion in them. Just keep watching. Just keep talking to them. If you hit that emotion, even on a very hard-nosed business executive, you got them. A lot of times you can, you can change an atmosphere, you can change to a, you know, a very successful sale, anything like that, because you've actually hit an emotion, a nerve in that person in a positive way. Just the same, we can hit a nerve in a person, or they can in us, that's a negative way. And so again, energy is everything. What our thoughts are saying to us is everything. Uh, so just, just think about that. So always think about the, what we're doing and not finding things wrong with us or thinking something's wrong and let somebody else then determine what's wrong with us. You know, so, oh, I know, I just, I, I'm just not worthy. Somebody, somebody will come up with a reason why. So we don't let them do that anymore because you're not, you're God's child. We're all God's kids. We're made in his image. And if we're made in his image, we can't be junk. We can't be failures. He talked to me about that a lot. <laughs> But we can't, we can't be, because we're made in his image, which is perfect. And so nothing else you remember, remember that. So when we're not happy with ourselves again, we will attract subconsciously, quite often subconsciously, the abusive, critical people to us to keep reaffirming that we don't deserve anything in life. And you know what? It's like, mm -mm. but as, as you keep doing that, you keep recognizing it, and then you push that away you'll notice one day you're not attracting those kind of people anymore because you're not giving off that energy. And, and, and honestly, you'll wake up and go, wow, those kind of people don't approach me anymore. Or for, I've, I've told women before, sometimes, you know, they were, guys would approach them, but they were the wrong kind that were just going to use them. And then finally, it's like, you know, I woke up one day and going, I was out with some friends like, huh, I'm not attracting those kind of people anymore because it, it's, it's gone. That part of the attraction is gone because you're too classy, you're too worthy to attract that anymore. So, you know, they go bug somebody else because they're not attracted to the high qualities that you have in you, that you've always had in you. So think about that too. Um, and, and ask, did this relationship or did this did job, whatever, did this help me at all? Did this do anything good for me at all? Um, a counselor at school <laughs> can be too. This counselor help me at all? Or tell me, oh, you need to just kind of stick to a, you know, menial job over here, or you just need to do something else. I mean, Einstein, when he was four, I believe, 
Um, his parents were told that he wasn't very bright Einstein and that he needed help and he would never amount to much. Einstein, four years old, was told, and his parents were told that. And so, hey, you know, like I said, nobody's comments, nobody's thoughts, nobody's opinions have the right to determine our worth and our value and what we're going to achieve in life. They don't. And so ask, how would I feel if that thought never existed? I just saw this recently and I thought, hmm, how would I feel if that thought never even existed? Meaning I had booted it out so many times or I had immediately done uh, like a, I call it brain jujitsu. Thoughts would come to my mind. It's like, nope, I'm kicking you out. I'm flipping you. So if it said you're not worthy, I'd say, no, I'm God's child. I'm a beautiful child of God. I have a brain and, you know, all these good qualities. I can mediate children's fights. I can help people with their math, whatever the case may be. And so start thinking, how, how would I feel if that thought never existed? Because if you push it out enough times, it won't exist anymore because your thoughts will be way up here instead of way down there. So I'm going to finish this in the next program. And God bless you and see you soon.